This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or simply making a donation. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, it's Friday, the weekend is almost upon us, it's so close that I can already hear the beer and curry calling my name, so that's my plans for the weekend, and if like me you also intend to watch a little bit of TV over the next couple of days, and if also like me you are fed up to the back teeth of hearing about the trials and tribulations of a recently unemployed young couple from Windsor, then fear not, we're not going to be talking about them today. What we are going to be talking about are five fantastic and well worth watching music documentaries that you can watch instead. Now, I've done a couple of videos about music and TV already. I did one uh, most recently about five great music-themed movies, and then a little while ago I did one um, concerning five great music TV shows that I grew up watching in the 70s and 80s and there's bound to be some overlap between those two videos and this one I'm doing today uh, but basically this is all about the documentaries this is all about the educational side of music TV so stick around if you want something cool to watch over the weekend these are my recommendations starting with Omnibus Leonard Bernstein. Okay, Omnibus featuring Leonard Bernstein. Now, this is the oldest uh, show that I'm going to talk about today. It dates all the way back to 1955. And because it dates from 1955, it's in black and white with the old square aspect ratio for the screen. And the picture quality isn't great. And the sound is in mono. And it's a little bit grainy in terms of sound quality as well. And none of this matters, because watching these talks given by Leonard Bernstein is an absolute joy. You are watching a guy who is clearly on top of his subject. He's Leonard Bernstein, and he's in love with the topic, and he um, explains and demonstrates uh, the, the topic that he's talking about in each documentary, in each talk, with... Um, a real enthusiasm and in layman's terms without being in any way condescending or elitist. The topics that he uh, goes into in various episodes include uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. He deconstructs it and rewrites it and demonstrates how Beethoven, when he was profoundly deaf, wrote one of the greatest and most recognisable pieces of music ever written, frankly. Uh, he also then uh, tackles the art of conducting. What does a conductor do in front of an orchestra and how does he do it? And what different styles of conducting, what uh, effect that can have on the performance of the orchestra. He tackles uh, jazz, explaining how jazz and blues are related and, you know, what the basic principles of jazz are and, by extension, blues too. And, you know, there are uh, about three or four of these documentaries uh, where he just speaks without notes to the camera, demonstrates things on a grand piano and then goes over and conducts an orchestra to kind of make a point a little bit further. Don't be put off by the fact that it's an old documentary and, uh, as I say, the sound and picture quality isn't great. Watch these documentaries. They will enrich your life, I promise you. So, what's next? Deep Purple. From here to infinite. Okay, I'm going from the oldest show that I'm going to recommend to the most recent. And I should have mentioned earlier, by the way, that all of these shows uh, I'm linking in the description box below, either to where you can find them on YouTube or you can find the DVD for a very reasonable price. Now then, uh, this is uh, basically a fly-on-the-wall documentary uh, behind the scenes with Deep Purple as they write and record their most recent album, Infinite. If you've not heard it, by the way, it is a fantastic album. It's uh, one of the stronger albums of the Steve Morse era of the band. And it's interesting to, to realise that um, Steve Morse has now been a member of Deep Purple I think I'm correct in saying this, longer than Richie Blackmore ever was, if you add together the different tenures that Blackmore spent with the band. And 
I like the Steve Morse era. I think Perpendicular is a fantastic album. That was the album, his debut, uh, that he debuted with the band. And um, like the live album, Live at the Olympia, uh, in from 96, I think it was, is a fantastic live album. One of the best live rock albums you're ever likely to hear. And uh, there have been, you know, one or two kind of albums where the Steve Morse incarnation of the band have treaded water a little bit. But not this one. I think Infinite is up there with the best of the band's output, regardless of who was in the guitarist role in the band. Um, the thing that strikes you when you watch this documentary is just the warmth that all of these guys uh, hold for each other. You know, you, you've got uh, Don Airy, Ian Pace, Ian Gillen, Roger Glover and Steve Morse. And... They're just like a bunch of friends. And obviously, they are a bunch of friends, but that you get the feeling that um, even if they weren't involved professionally together, even if they weren't making music together, they would be a bunch of old curmudgeons uh, sitting round a table down the pub playing dominoes or something. They've got that sort of, um, you know, kind of friendly, warm vibe going on. There's a great sense of camaraderie amongst these guys. And together with producer Bob Ezrin, you see them crafting the songs that f that end up going on to the album, you know, right the way from um, an initial jam, an initial riff, that uh, somebody picks up on and then everybody else joins in and before you know where you are you've got you know a song that's kind of in development um, none of the songs at this stage have lyrics to them Ian Gillen you see him kind of sitting just at the side watching uh, the other guys kind of jamming and performing and, and Ian's just kind of writing down lyrical ideas and getting a sense and a feel for what kind of uh, song what they're working on is going to end up as. And as I say, you follow the song, uh, all of the songs from um, initial idea right the way through to um, kind of post-production and, and just the, the finished album. It's a fantastically interesting documentary and it's just fun really to see musicians of this calibre um, just jamming and, and having fun with each other. So, highly recommended uh, Deep Purple from here to Infinite. What's next? Howard Goodall, The Story of Music. Now, I've mentioned Howard Goodall before, I think, in one of these videos where I'm talking about uh, music-themed or music-related TV shows. Uh, but I don't think I've mentioned this one. This is a six-part documentary from about five years ago. Um, it's called Howard Goodall's Story of Music, and it is exactly that. He uh, basically does an analysis of the history of music, uh, starting with the earliest hollowed-out animal bone flutes from Stone Age mankind, right the way through to the plethora of modern styles of popular music that surround us today. And like Leonard Bernstein, who I was talking about earlier, he does this in a way which is uh, engaging, interesting, fascinating is not too strong a word to use and at no point do you ever feel bamboozled by music theory or the complexity of it all and at no point do you ever feel like the content is being dumbed down either and that's a difficult balance to strike speaking as someone who you know has been working in music education for a little while now 30 years i feel really old um so yeah, who is Howard Goodall anyway? Well, he uh, he began his professional career, I guess, as the guy who wrote all of the music for the classic late 70s, early 80s satirical news show, Not the Nine O'Clock News. So if you remember songs like I Like Trucking, uh, then you are familiar with Howard Goodall's work. You'll also be familiar with his work if you have ever watched an episode of Red Dwarf, because he did all the music for that show, including the theme tune. And if you're a big fan, like I am, of a TV show called QI, well, the theme tune to that is one of his as well. Uh, but as well as um, not, not the 9 o'clock news and various TV themes over the years, he's also done several uh, highly regarded serious, in inverted commas, classical works. And the man knows that his topic, believe me. And as I say, he, he explains it all in a clear, engaging, interesting uh, manner that at no, at no point begins to sound 
um, dumbed down or condescending. It is a fantastically interesting series of documentaries and I urge you to watch them. You will love them, I promise you. So that's that. What's next? The Last Waltz. Okay, every now and again, I take a look at my YouTube channel analytics, uh, which amongst other things uh, tells me the demographic of the uh, people who are watching my videos, my audience. And it seems that most of you are of a similar vintage to me, it has to be said. Um, so I'm going to assume that the majority of you have heard of this film and probably seen it. But just in case there are a few people out there who've never heard of it, then that's why I'm including it here. In case you don't know, it is a documentary made by director Martin Scorsese and it documents the final performance by the band. Um, you know, Robbie Robertson, Levon Helm, and I can't remember the other names. I do apologise. Uh, but this performance took place at the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco on November the 25th, 1976, and Scorsese captures the whole thing on film. In between the performances, you will see very candid and very revealing interviews with the band members and coming on to have a bit of a jam with the guys. You will also you also get like a stellar uh, lineup of uh, guest musicians, including amongst others Van Morrison, Eric Clapton, Neil Diamond, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, to name but a fraction of the people who turn up for a bit of a jam. It's just good music uh, movie making. It's, it's interesting, some fantastic musical performances, revealing interviews and just great music. And um, of course, it's shot by Scorsese and he knows a thing or two about putting an interesting narrative together on film. So yeah, check it out. The Last Waltz featuring the band. What's next? The Wrecking Crew. Okay, this is a 2008 documentary by director Danny Tedesco, who, if you recognise that surname, then you probably know about his dad, Tommy Tedesco, who was a prominent member of The Wrecking Crew. This was a legendary group of 60s LA session musicians who were first sort of brought together and coalesced as the uh, house band for Phil Spector's Wall of Sound, but they kind of went on to uh, play on pretty much everybody's uh, music that was recorded in LA uh, around about that sort of time. Just, I mean, just a few of the uh, tunes that they played on. California Dreaming, uh, These Boots Are Made For Walking, Good Vibrations, in fact the whole Beach Boys Pet Sounds album was these guys, uh, A Taste Of Honey by Herb Alpert and the T. Uana Brass, loads and loads of fantastic, iconic, instantly recognisable uh, recordings featured the Wrecking Crew. It's often uh, kind of misremembered, you know, that this was a tight-knit, uh, top LA slick band uh, that were, you know, had certain members and this was the lineup. It wasn't. It was a bunch of, you know, uh, a, a, a wide-ranging bunch of musicians who, you know, came together for various projects. But collectively, this uh, this entire pool of musicians, if you like, were known as the Wrecking Crew. Sometimes it'd be Tommy Tedesco on guitar. Does anybody else remember his column from the 1980s um, guitar player magazines, by the way? I used to read that avidly. Uh, apparently his electric guitar, his Telecaster, was the most recorded electric guitar in history that was what was always quoted i'm not sure if that's strictly true or not but um you know sometimes it'd be tommy tedesco on guitar sometimes it'd be glenn campbell uh, before he was the famous singer songwriter glenn campbell he was a member of the wrecking crew and once again it's just fascinating to hear reminiscences by the surviving members of uh, this group of musicians about sessions that they played on and you know um what it was like playing with the Beach Boys, what it was like playing with the Mamas and Papas, and, and so on and so on. Fantastically revealing and candid documentary, and well worth watching if you have any interest at all in modern popular music. You know, these guys were 
as influential as the big names whose names were actually on the records. Um, so yeah, the Wrecking Crew, well worth checking out, so why don't you do so? And that pretty much rounds up my recommendations for some TV to watch over the weekend. As I've said, um, I've linked in the description box below to where you can either find the DVDs for these shows or you can find them on YouTube. And that pretty much is it for today. I hope you found something interesting and informative in this video and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and why not give me a like while you're at it um, I just want to make a couple of announcements here uh, as we draw the video to a close first of all uh, my Christmas single a few people have been asking how much money that has raised for Zoe's place you remember I did a, an instrumental cover of the old wizard tune I wish it could be Christmas every day the short answer is I don't know how much money that's raised yet because DistroKid, it takes about, um, well in some cases a couple of months or a little bit more to get the uh, the information back from the places like Amazon and iTunes and, and various things like that. So as soon as I have information to update you with, I will do so. Um, I just also want to tell you a little bit about some videos that are coming up uh, in the near future. Um, at some point in the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to be doing a, um, a video about my course, Play Lead Guitar the Easy Way, which is now available for the Fret Zealot Tuition Aid, which you may recall I did a video about a little while ago. And when that video, when I've finished kind of planning that video and putting it together, there is going to be a giveaway as well, where you can win a copy of my course for the Fret Zealot and a Fret Zealot to go along with it. So a nice little giveaway coming up there in the near future. Make sure you check that out also this year uh, i'm thinking i'm putting together an idea for a bit of a, uh, a build project um haven't entirely decided what it's going to be yet but i'm probably going to uh, splash out on one of these guitar kits i keep getting uh, people asking me if they're any good and to be honest i've never used one so i don't know uh, but i will you know kind of check it out and, and let you know exactly how the guitar ends up turning out uh, if there's any suggestions you want for which kit to build or you know uh, which particular style of guitar to go for i've got a hankering actually to do um a strat but wire it up with the three pickups a bit like a brian may guitar so you can get that brian may sound without having to have a, a brian may looking guitar if if the aesthetic of that guitar puts you off you know it, it is a guitar which is so strongly identified with a single player that maybe you want that sound without um actually you know owning uh, a guitar that looks like a brian may guitar so i'm thinking about that i'm mulling it all over at the moment and if you if you have any suggestions please feel free to uh, write a comment down below and that as i say is pretty much it for today um i got some stuff to do before it's beer and curry o'clock so i've got to go and crack on with a little bit of work and i'll just take this opportunity now to say thank you so much for your time thank you for watching and i do look forward to seeing you all again next time around have a great weekend folks see you next time